I'd like to discuss with you the efforts we've done in Europe in looking at the uh, uh, epidemiology of enterovirus 68. As you all know, in 2014, it became evident that uh, in the uh, summer period and the autumn period, enterovirus 68 in the United States and in Canada was an issue because over a thousand uh, children were admitted to the intensive care units. And people were afraid that this could uh, uh, be an, a new epidemic. A number of these children died, unfortunately, but also a number of the children had symptoms uh, that were similar like with polio virus, uh, paralysis of uh, the arms and the legs. The question uh, was whether this virus also was prevalent and present in Europe. Therefore, together with the European Society for Clinical Virology, as well as the uh, ECDC in Stockholm, we joined uh, uh, forces together with Professor Bruno Lina of the Reference Laboratory in Lyon uh, to ask our colleagues whether we could look for this uh, problem and issue in Europe. Over 200 uh, colleagues joined this effort uh, from 42 laboratories and we analyzed uh, close to 18,000 samples uh, looking for enteroviruses and more specifically for enteroviruses uh, D68. Within a period of two months, we were able to show that enterovirus is much more prevalent as has been anticipated before. And we also showed that close to 400 uh, positives were identified, mostly children. However, since a number of laboratories also looked uh, for this virus in, in, in the adult population, and then mostly in transplant patients or adults with a severe underlying disease, it was shown that this virus is definitely prevalent in Europe, similar as it is in the United States not really surprising me. However, it also showed that within Europe we have uh, the possibility to look for new and emerging viruses in such a short period. They also found some drawbacks of the whole uh, procedures. First of all, uh, laboratories in Eastern European countries definitely had problems in introducing new and rapid diagnostics in such a, a short period, something we would anticipate once a new virus, a new emerging virus, would have uh, shown up in Europe. And second of all, we also showed that in southern European countries, the diagnostics for uh, respiratory viruses outside of influenza and RSV is not that uh, high as compared to northern European countries. Interestingly, but still something we don't understand, is that the prevalence of enteroviruses, and specifically enterovirus 68, in uh, Scandinavian countries, in Norway and in Sweden, was much higher compared to uh, middle Europe, in the middle of Europe or the southern of Europe. Something we don't understand, but it's definitely something we could and should investigate in the near future. In summary, it shows that the uh, prevalence of enterovirus uh, in respiratory problems should not be uh, underestimated. And not unexpectedly, that a respiratory virus that is prevalent in the United States, like enterovirus 68, is also prevalent in Europe. As we, we all know, we are traveling worldwide. We are in a few hours, whether we are in Milan, in Amsterdam or New York, we travel and therefore the pathogens join us in traveling and that's for free. But the problems are something we all will have to share. Thank you very much.